If you've ever been told your thyroid is normal, while you're exhausted, gaining weight, losing hair, constipated, freezing in July, and surviving on caffeine and willpower, this video is for you. Because here's the issue. A lot of people get one thyroid test, TSH, and if it's in the normal range, the conversation ends. Meanwhile, you're sitting there thinking, so why do I feel like a smartphone stuck at 3% battery? Today I'm going to explain thyroid labs in a way you'll never forget, using one simple analogy. Your thyroid system is like your home heating system. And once you understand the system, you'll see why TSH alone is like judging the comfort of your entire home by staring at the thermostat while ignoring the furnace, the fuel, the heat in the rooms, and rather somebody is actively wrecking the environment. Quick note, this is education not personal medical advice. Use it to have a smarter conversation with your clinician. All right, picture your body as a house. Your brain and pituitary gland are the thermostat on the wall. Your thyroid gland is the furnace in the basement. Thyroid hormones are the heat that warms every room. Your brain, gut, muscles, skin, metabolism, mood. When thyroid function is off, your whole house feels off. Let's map the labs to the system. TSH first. TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. It comes from the pituitary in your brain. In our house, TSH is the thermostat signal. If the thermostat senses the house is cold, it sends a stronger signal. Turn the heat up. That usually means TSH goes up when your brain thinks you need more thyroid effect. If the house is too hot, the thermostat sends less signal. Relax, we're good. That usually means TSH goes down when there's plenty of thyroid effect. So TSH is a messenger, a signal, not heat. And here's the first big lesson. You can have a thermostat that's working with a furnace that's failing. Or you can have a furnace that's fine with a thermostat that's broken. We'll get to that. Now let's talk about what the furnace produces. Your thyroid mostly makes T4. So T4 is like your stack of slow burning logs. It's potential energy. It's not the hottest heat, but it's the raw fuel your body uses to make what it really wants, which is T3. Free T3 is the hot flame, the usable heat that warms the rooms. If T4 is the wood pile, T3 is the fire actually burning in the fireplace. Most of what people feel, energy, metabolism, temperature, bowel speed, mood, brain, clarity, tracks more with T3 action than just T4 sitting in storage. Now one test that confuses people, reverse T3. Reverse T3 is like a fake flame. Imagine a device that looks like it's heating a room, takes up space, but doesn't produce warmth. Worse, it can block the real heat from doing its job. Reverse T3 is an inactive form that can rise when your body is under stress, illness, inflammation, sleep deprivation, overtraining, or sometimes when you've been under eating for too long. It's your body saying, we're in survival mode. Let's conserve energy. Basically, your metabolism hits the brakes. Now the final piece, and the one that makes a lot of people say, wait, so my immune system is involved? Thyroid antibodies. Antibodies are like attackers or rust damaging the furnace. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune condition where your immune system mistakenly targets your thyroid. In our analogy, you've got a furnace, but your own security system keeps punching it in the face. The two common antibodies you'll hear about are TPO antibodies and the thyroglobulin antibodies. If those are elevated, it suggests an autoimmune process is happening or has happened, often Hashimoto's. All right, now let's make this practical. I'm going to walk you through the most common lab stories, plus the bonus ones that create the most confusion online. So if you have access to your lab tests, you may want to take them out for this part of the video or save it for later. First common story, high TSH and low free T4. Translation, the thermostat is cranked up. Your brain is yelling more heat, but the furnace can't keep up. That pattern often fits hypothermia thyroidism. People might feel tired, cold, constipated, depressed, have dry skin, hair thinning, heavier periods, weight gain, or difficulty losing weight. And if antibodies are high too, that points towards Hashimoto's as a likely root cause, meaning the furnace is being damaged over time. Second common story, low TSH and high free T4 or high free T3. Translation, the thermostat is trying to shut things down because the house is too hot, but the furnace is blasting anyway. That pattern often fits hyperthyroidism. Symptoms can include anxiety, palpitations, tremor, sweating, heat intolerance, diarrhea, unintentional weight loss, insomnia. Important safety note, if you're having severe palpitations, chest pain, fading, severe shortness of breath, or you feel unsafe, don't watch another video. Get medical help. 
third common story and the most frustrating. Normal TSH, but you still feel awful. This is where people get dismissed. Your labs are fine. Meanwhile, you're thinking, then why do I feel like something is going on? Here are a few reasons still using our house. You can have plenty of T4 logs and not enough T3 flame. That's a conversion issue. Your body isn't efficiently turning fuel into usable heat. You can have higher reverse T3. Your body is making dummy heat and blocking real warmth. Often in stress, illness, inflammation, sleep debt, or chronic survival mode. You can have antibodies elevated, rust on the furnace, even while TSH looks normal, especially early on. Or the thyroid might not be the main problem at all. Some thyroid-like symptoms can come from iron deficiency, low ferritin, low B12, low vitamin D, insulin resistance, inadequate protein, medication effects, sleep apnea, chronic stress, or other hormone issues. Root cause medicine is asking why is the system struggling, not just is the number inside the reference range. And let me pause for a second. If this is helping you, hit like and subscribe because understanding your labs is way more useful than fearing your labs. And it saves you from random internet advice that sounds confident but isn't correct. Now let's add the bonus scenarios that show up constantly in real life. One, subclinical hypothyroidism. This is when TSH is high but free T4 is still normal. In house terms, the thermostat is turned up but the furnace is still barely keeping the house warm. It's not a full furnace failure. It's more like the furnace is aging, underpowered, or dealing with early damage, and the thermostat is compensating. Some people feel fine. Some people feel symptoms. Context matters. Your age, pregnancy plans, heart risk, symptom severity, and rather antibodies suggest Hashimoto's. It's a great zone, not a your doom zone. Two, subclinical hyperthyroidism. This is when TSH is low, but free T4 and free T3 are still normal. In house terms. The thermostat is already turning down early because it senses the house is warming up, but the hallway thermometer hasn't caught up yet. This can matter, especially in older adults or people at risk for heart rhythm problems or bone loss. Three, central hypothyroidism also called secondary hypothyroidism. This one is less common, but it's a big reason you can't worship TSH like it's the whole truth. This is when the issue isn't the furnace, it's the thermostat wiring. The pituitary or hypothalamus isn't sending the right signal. The pattern can look like like TSH normal or lowish, but free T4 is low. Translation, the house is cold, but the thermostat isn't sounding the alarm. This deserves medical evaluation because the root cause isn't in the thyroid gland itself. Four, thyroiditis, the swinging furnace scenario. Thyroiditis just means thyroid inflammation. Think of it like the furnace gets irritated and starts behaving unpredictably. Sometimes the thyroid leaks hormones early on. So labs look temporarily hyper. That's with anxiety, sweating, palpitations. Then later the thyroid burns out for a period and labs look hypo. This explains why some people say, my labs were high last month and low this month. The furnace didn't suddenly develop a personality. It went through an inflammatory episode. Five, antibodies positive, hormones normal, early Hashimoto's. This is a huge one. You can have elevated TPO or thyroglobulin antibodies while TSH and free T4 look normal. That doesn't mean nothing is happening. It can mean the attack has started, but the furnace is still compensating. It's like rust on the furnace that hasn't caused a breakdown yet. That's why trends over time and symptoms matter, not just a single snapshot. Now, let's talk about lab traps because sometimes the numbers look weird for reasons that have nothing to do with your actual thyroid function. One common culprit, biotin a popular hair and nail supplement. Biotin can interfere with some thyroid lab tests and make results look misleading. So if your labs are confusing and you're taking biotin, tell your clinician. Sometimes it's as simple as holding it before labs. Your clinician can guide that. Another trap confusing total hormone levels with free levels. Total T4 or total T3 can shift based on binding proteins, like how much hormone is on the truck, not how much actually got delivered into the room. Free T4 and free T3 are closer to usable heat. Now, one more practical trap, medication timing. If you're on thyroid medication, testing can be confusing if you just changed the dose recently, you took your medication right before labs, or you're checking labs too soon after an adjustment. You don't want to judge the furnace in the middle of a renovation. Make sure your clinician is guiding the timing so results reflect your steady state, not a temporary spike.
like. Now here's the part I want you to actually use in your next appointment because empowerment isn't arguing with your doctor, it's asking better questions. If you have symptoms like fatigue, brain fog, cold intolerance, unexplained weight gain, hair loss, constipation, depression, anxiety, palpitations, heat intolerance, or you just feel off, you can say, can we do a full thyroid evaluation, not just TSH? And the basic list to discuss is TSH, free T4, free T3, thyroid antibodies as TPO and thyroglobulin. And then depending on your story, your clinician may consider a reverse T3, especially if stress illness is a major theme and symptoms don't match the basics. And if hyperthyroid symptoms exist, graze related antibodies like TSI or TRAB. And it's also reasonable to ask about common thyroid lookalikes because sometimes the house is cold due to other issues, iron or ferritin, B12, vitamin D, glucose insulin markers, sleep quality or sleep apnea risk, and inflammation markers when appropriate because sometimes the furnace is fine, but the windows are open, the insulation is terrible, and the thermostat is getting blamed for everything. Now I'll give you a simple, memorable way to think about your thyroid results before you even walk into the visit. Ask, what is the thermostat doing? That's the TSH. Does the furnace have fuel? That's free T4. Is there real heat in the rooms? That's free T3. Is there fake heat or breaking happening? That's reverse T3. Is the furnace under attack? That's thyroid antibodies. I know thyroid labs can be a little confusing, but I really hope this helped. And if it did, hit like, subscribe, and share it with someone who's been told everything looks fine while they feel terrible. And here's the question for the comments. Have you ever had a normal TSH but still had symptoms? Yes or no? If yes, which symptoms bothered you the most? Fatigue, weight, hair, mood, constipation, or brain fog? Because you're not crazy, you're not weak, and you're not just getting older. Sometimes it's the system. And once you understand the system, you can finally start asking the right questions and getting the right help. I'll see you in the next video.